What is up you guys? We did it! We made it a whole year! I can't believe it! I've never stuck with anything for an entire year and I've just been having a blast with this channel so I thought I'd get on here and thank you guys so much. It's been a year since my first video game upload. Um, Sally Face. I think it was Sally Face. It was a very good game. Uh, terrible editing because I was streaming on Twitch and I'd just upload a whole chapter, but I'd like to think I've gotten a little bit better since then. This is a video I was thinking about doing for a while because I thought I wanted to do something special. I wanted a little bit more of like a get to know me kind of thing. So I thought, why not share some of my favorite childhood games? Now this video is gonna hit a little bit closer to home to me because I have been struggling for la since last month and earlier this month because I lost someone that was very close to me. I lost my cousin. We practically grew up together. And so a lot of these games I used to play with him. So there's a lot of a lot of connections with that and I, I had thought about doing this video before any of this happened and now I just think it, it would be nice. It would be nice for me, you know, I still have a small channel, so I feel like I could get a little more personal and it's not like anyone's gonna see this. So yeah, I, I think I could get away with it and I, I just, I'd like to make this video and share with you guys uh, a bit of my childhood and maybe a little bit of him. <laughs> and you know, the, the experiences that we had together while also letting you get to know me. I think I think that it, that'll be a good experience and I think it'll be a very fun video for me to make as well just to look back on and to be able to talk about it. Um, yeah, just thank you guys for sticking with me for a whole year and I hope you enjoy this video. <laughs> so a lot of these games are going to be on my old Nintendo DS. You see the, the hinge is already broken. My cousin actually did that. I lent him this for like a month, years ago, and he brought it back and it was busted. And I was like, what happened? And he was like, it was like that when you gave it to me. So, bit of a liar, but... <laughs> Um, yeah, so this is my first, uh, my, one of my first DS's. I think I, I actually had like a regular black one before this and then I, I bought this one because it was the, the Pokemon and I love Pokemon and <laughs> that's the first game we're gonna start with is Pokemon Pearl and Pokemon Ruby. These, I bought these almost at the very same, at the very same time when I first started getting into gaming. Um, these games formed my childhood. I have about like 500 hours in this game, probably more, I think 700. These games, they made my childhood. They're so special to me. Uh, um, I don't have the original carts. I don't have them for any of my Nintendo games because that's just how we rolled back in the day. We didn't, we didn't need to collect the cases. We had, we had our own built-in fun little Nintendo cases where we just put all the, all the cards in and you wouldn't have to think about it. It. I would listen to this to the the Pokemon Ruby like trumpet noises and I'd turn the game off and I'd still hear it in my sleep that's how often that's how often I would play I would start brainwashing myself into hearing it when it wasn't even on of course for Ruby my first starter was Mudkip but I learned to love Trico after after a while but I mean these games are really special to me my brother was the one that got me into Pokemon and ever since then it was like a gateway for all these new games to come in and for me to learn learn about how how to play video games and I'm still not not the best at them but these were these are my gateway drugs right here next up we have Nintendogs because of course you know every girl in the early 2000s had a copy of Nintendogs let's let's be for real and <laughs> I would always pick the Dalmatian but in this one they don't have the Dalmatian so I lost my original copy and I've bought in like so many more over time just just because I love Nintendogs it was initially the first reason why I wanted to get a DS in the first place because my friend had Nintendogs and I was like this is the coolest thing ever and yeah that's I begged my mom to get me a Nintendo for for months on end until she finally caved and the first game that I ever ever bought was Nintendogs and then Pokemon Pearl and Ruby followed along right afterwards. 
But I mean, how can you not love Nintendogs? These cute little dogs, you can feed them, you can walk them. It's, it was just a good time. It would even get a little competitive because some of those little little competitions where they'd have you throwing the, throwing the Frisbee, I would get mad. I think I actually ended up breaking my first DS because I lost in one of those games, which is, very embarrassing, but I was I was an angry, competitive little kid, so it really it really got to me that I couldn't win. But the next one, I'm showing it right now. I haven't mentioned it, but Spectrobes. I don't really remember the plot that much, but I remember really enjoying the main character and the main character's humor. It's almost like Pokemon. You you find these fossils, you dig them up, you revive them, they become your pets, you can feed them. That was my favorite thing to do is, you know, feed the animals. From what I remember, I think it takes place in space and you're this guy who stumbles upon this new technology to uncover fossils and then revive those fossils and use the use those uh, creatures that you revive as weapons. So it's like Pokemon when you revive a fossil, but it's it's a lot more space centered and you're you're flying to different planets and you're taking down bad guys, other other creatures and it's 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 a fun ride. Next up, we have Naruto Ninja Council 3. This this was the only Naruto game that I really loved on the Nintendo DS. I used to play this with my cousin all the time. All the time. We would we would hook up our DSs together and we we're supposed to do missions together. That was kind of the point of teaming up with people. But instead, we would just arena match 1v1, fight each other the whole time. One of us would probably get mad. One of us would probably cry, but it was Naruto. We'd, we'd bounce back. We'd, we'd start playing 10 minutes later like nothing happened, and that was, that was what we'd do. He would always want to be Sasuke. I never got a say in wanting to be Sasuke. He was always designated Sasuke. He loved Naruto. I loved Naruto. Naruto is something that we were both really connected heavily on. We'd watch it, we'd we'd play these games, and it was it was something that really defined our our relationship growing up is just instantly I'd get to his house, we'd play Naruto. It was <laughs> it was the he was the only one that would play Naruto with me. He was the only one that had another copy of this game and every time I every time I think of this game I remember how many how many punches were thrown and how many tears were shed over <laughs> over who would beat who in this game. Another game we have is Drawn to Life. This is one of my all-time favorite games. It was actually the first game I've ever beaten, ever. And that, that, that itself means a lot to me because I was someone who was terrible at games. I never thought I'd be able to finish a game. And beating that, I beat it twice. And the, the ending song that plays is just so beautiful. I, it brought tears to my eyes as a kid. Um, Drawn to Life is about this little village that is created by this, this all-seeing powerful creator, they call him. And the, the town is in trouble and they, they beg the creator to send someone to help. And that is the character that you play. You get to draw a lot in this game. So if you wanted to, you could draw your character. I usually choose a preset because my drawings were not it. So that's what I would do. And basically a lot of the townspeople are in trouble. You need to go out and help them. It's a nice little platformer. The music is fun. It's very simple. The story is very sweet though. You meet a lot of kind and interesting characters along the way. Looking back on it, I think it has a lot of religious uh, implications. The main characters are literally called Joey and Mary. But I, I never picked up on that, that it was like an implication of them being Joseph and Mary and the whole creator thing. <laughs> like it was just, there's a lot of religious undertones and they weren't very subtle now that I look back on it. But it was still just such a great game. I really liked it. And if you ever have the opportunity, if you have a DS, I recommend that you buy it somewhere and play it. Next game, this one kind of goes into my Xbox and Wii era because I didn't really play it this much on Nintendo, but if you can't see, 
and the and the mirror it's reversed so you can't so i'll just tell you what it is it's a uh, lego star wars uh i think it's lego star wars 2 the original trilogy i don't know but i used to play this on my ds all the time i used to play it on xbox all the time uh I, it was another game i would play with my cousin we would co-op all the time and it was another game that we would just end up fighting each other be over who got the most coins <laughs> and that was that was basically the game one of us would get mad and we'd go up to the xbox and turn off the power button and the other one would chase us around and beat us with a controller <laughs> I'm not painting a very good picture of my childhood, but I swear at the time it was a vibe. <laughs> but Star Wars, Lego, Lego games in 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 particular were games that I really enjoyed and I could really connect with my friends on because they were just they were simple games that even if I had friends who weren't into gaming like I was, you could just show them the ropes and they'd get it instantly so it was a real it was a real good fun game to have when you'd have non-gamers over because it was it was just it was fun everyone likes star wars now let's talk about games that i do not have copies of because they were connected to my xbox which used to be my brother's xbox but they were connected to my xbox and i no longer have that console or any of the games i don't know it just it disappeared out into the wind the second i i left home and i don't know where they are anymore but the first one would be true crime streets of la it is what i would call the poor man's gta i i never got the opportunity to play gta because my mom knew about it and she would never let me touch the game but she did not know about true crime streets of la and how how similar it was um basically i'm sure there was a plot to the game but being a little kid all i wanted to do was steal cars and make them go boom so that's pretty much all i did there's there's a lot of hand-to-hand -hand combat lots of shooting it was a blast honestly i wish i could find that game i wish they had it for for pc or just something i can download and play it again because ugh, i would love to relive that and maybe even get into the actual plot of the of the game like like god intended instead of just doing whatever i wanted i would i would love to relive that experience genuinely <laughs> in fact i don't think i'm doing this game justice so let me let me read what the what the description has to say Loose cannon cop Nick King, suspended from the LAPD, becomes part of an elite police unit and defends the City of Angels from a plot involving the Chinese triad and the Russian mob. I'm sure that's a great plot. I never got to it in my, in my years of gaming. Another game that completely obliterated my childhood would be, I think... How is it pronounced? The Herbs? The Sims in the City? I would just call it The Sims, but it... It was a lot different. It was a game that, it was a Sims game that I don't think you could get married, have kids, or even age in that game. I think it's just like a party game. Like <laughs> you go around as your character having fun, at least from what I remember. I don't remember any, any life cycles in that game. I just remember going around and causing absolute mayhem. It was a game that I would play religiously every day, every night, every moment of free time I had. I would play until my eyes could no longer focus. <laughs> it was, it totally took over my life and it created my addiction to Sims games for sure. Even though it didn't really feel completely like a Sims game because you couldn't do everything. At least not not as far as I'm concerned. Uh, you can't really do everything that you could in a normal Sims game, but it it had that same that's it still had that same effect, you know. It was originally my brother's game too, and he had gotten so far. He was like a millionaire in the game. He was killing it in that game, and my dumb little self uh, deleted his save by accident. By accident, I didn't know. I just I wanted to make my own new character, and I saved over his file and when he found out he was just like ah oh, man but he he didn't he didn't beat me or anything for it even though if i was in his position now i would have i would have uh not been alive any longer i would have ceased to exist so he was he was very patient about that and i did feel bad but i kept playing <laughs> it didn't stop me from playing another game that 
kind of defined my childhood and was one of the first games I played on Xbox was Mortal Kombat. I think it was Armageddon. Uh, it was not, and I'll, I'll let you know, it was not the, the actual fighting that got me into the game. It was the, the racing mini game that they would have. It kind of played like Mario Kart, but it was a lot more gruesome and I loved that. Little kid me ate that up. But that game, I would play, I was such an expert at it. I can't believe they haven't redone that or made it its own game. I really, I really want Want that to come back one day because it was so much fun. It was another game that I could really just play with anyone who came over because it was simple, you know? I Like I said, it was like Mario Kart except with more, more gory cutscenes, more gory deaths. <laughs> and you know what? Actually, I said Mortal Kombat was the last game I'd be talking about, but there is one more. One, one I'd really like to mention because I have a really good memory tied to it and I didn't play it a lot but it's, it's nice to look back on and think about was Resident Evil 5. Now, I, I'm gonna stand by and say I've never really played Resident Evil 5 because I don't remember any of the cutscenes, I don't remember any of the plot, I don't remember any of the, the characters except I think Chris Redfield is in it. See, like, that's how out of touch I was, because I was not good at the game, and I never got far. But there is a good childhood memory tied to it, is my brother brought me, my cousin, and uh, another one of my cousins uh, over, and we were gonna, like, pull an all-nighter and just play video games all night, and we both really wanted to try our best and play Resident Evil 5, even though we did not have the skill for it because we were so little, but my brother, he was cool and he let us play his Resident Evil 5 copy on Xbox and we, me and my cousin, the one that I lost, we played the entire night. There was times where like I needed to take a break, I laid down for like five minutes, woke back up, he was ready, he was ready to go, we were playing the, the whole time and it was, it was such a good memory. Our, our other cousin, I remember, fell asleep on the couch, but it was just me and him, and we were playing the whole night, and it was... It was a good memory. We didn't get very far in the game at all, but... Uh, it's just... <laughs> it was just one of those things that's like... My brother really went out of his way that day to, like, make a good make a good memory for us. Even though he went to bed and left us to <laughs> fend for ourselves, we... He still helped make that memory, and I think about it a lot. <laughs> I remember warning my cousin that I was gonna be terrible at the game, and he probably was too, which, to, to his credit, he was a lot better than me, but we still both sucked at the game. And he, I remember first learning how to shoot, and he looked at me and he's like, wow, you really are bad at the game. And I was like, I told you. <laughs> but no, it was, it was such a fun time that night, and yeah, the next morning we had pancakes and it was it was just such a vibe even though we were dead tired and we were, we were just sitting on the couch the whole night just playing that game and even though we were both tired we were like leaning against each other mindlessly shooting zombies and it was it was still somehow just one of the best times ever and I'll never forget that moment. A little emotional there, but that's that's normal, that's healthy. And I still really wanted to make this video because there are so many games that just have emotional ties and those were some of the some of the ones that I really felt like I connected and defined my childhood with. And you know, my cousin, he was a big part of that childhood. Every every good memory that I have looking back, he was he was in eighty percent of them. He was a big part of my life and he he helped form a lot of memories that, that I had growing up and that I can look back on. So if I'm getting emotional, I'm sorry. I'm not trying to make anyone uncomfortable, but they're, they're all good emotions. That's why I'm tearing up. And I just appreciate a lot of what gaming has done for me in this past year. I have played a lot more games than I thought I ever would, and it's, it's, been, it's given me that experience that I've been missing since I was a kid to finally get back into gaming, to get my, my first real gaming PC, and to be able to have this opportunity to play games that I just, I didn't think I would, and I get to experience it with other people, and it's almost like being able to sit around with my, my good friends and my siblings again, <laughs> and just commentate, just have fun. You know, making videos has kind of been like an outlet for me to, to express myself lately, and kind of get to be the person I wanted to be and the person who I really feel like I 
I am and can be as well. So I just, I felt like this would be a nice way to express the things that I'm feeling and kind of share a bit of my, my life with you guys. It's a little more personal. So again, thank you so much for watching. And if you're subscribed, if you've commented on any of my videos, thank you so much. It just, it means a lot and I appreciate it. And I hope to see you next year. Bye.